We're on your side with tonight's cover story. How are reports of sexual assaults handled in our schools? As parents, we shouldn't have to think twice about our child's safety at school. They're there to learn. But the reality is sometimes we do worry. We worry about bullying and weapons and sexual assault. Innocent children are being taken advantage of, sometimes by adults, sometimes by a classmate. And it happens more often than you may think. We pulled up some data on sexual assault incidents happening in K-12 through public schools across the country. And the latest numbers we could find are from the Department of Education. They're from 2018, so about five years ago. Reports of sexual violence at schools rose from about 9,600 in the 2015-2016 school year to nearly 15,000 in the 2017-2018 school year. So that's an increase of more than 50%. Now, at the time of those numbers, North Carolina was ranked number five among states with the highest reports of rape or attempted rape. Now, WBTV has tried to get specific data for Charlotte Mecklenburg schools, the largest school district here in our area. That has proven difficult. A WBTV investigation found the Charlotte Mecklenburg Board of Education does not have an accurate record of the number of rapes and sexual assaults reported on its campuses over the past decade. For example, numbers provided by CMS to WBTV say there was only one reported rape in the entire district in the 10 years from 2011 to 2021, even though we know of four reported rapes at just one high school alone in that same time period. Well, this week, a Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools student reported a male staff member sexually assaulted her. 25-year-old David Lucas was arrested on charges of taking indecent liberties with a child and kidnapping. Lucas works as a family engagement advocate with the school district. Our Nick Ochner sat down with the mother of the student who was reportedly assaulted. He asked how she feels about the district's handling of her child's case. Both Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools and Charlotte Mecklenburg Police have been under fire and in the news recently for how they've handled other cases of students being assaulted on campus. Right. Your situation was different. I mean, as soon as possible. And ever since then, they have been really supportive, um, the two women detectives, and um, just making us feel comfortable, uh, keeping us up to date on what's going on with the arrest and everything like that. Um, and as for CMS, um, they responded quickly and things like that, but it's, there are still questions for me. What are those questions? Um, it's just a lot. I don't want to disclose it, but it's just a lot of questions I have within myself. Um, but overall, they did respond quickly, and they have been supportive. Do you think this could have been prevented? Definitely. Um, it could have been per prevented. Um, I will say that, yeah. Who do you hold responsible for what happened to your daughter? I will say him. And the environment that she was in, the school is supposed to be a safe place. Um, and I feel like out of all people, why my daughter was targeted and why was he able to even get her out of class? So, yeah, it's a lot more questions. But I will say, you know, they did their part by responding very quickly. Our Nick Oxner joins us uh, here in studio to talk uh, more about this. It is supposed to be a safe place. We shouldn't have to worry about these kinds of things, but sadly we, we do see it happen. Uh, we heard the mom there and her describing her actions with CMS. Compare and contrast that to the students and parents you talked to in your prior investigations. Yeah, so our investigations that focus on Myers Park and Hawthorne Academy, we should mm -hmm. say off the top involve student on student things, not teacher on right. student. So not super apples to apples, but generally speaking, still mm -hmm. a, enough for a comparison. Previous reports may or may not have been reported to police, may or may not have had an investigation that was any kind of thorough, um, and none of them, and of previous things that we've investigated, resulted in any action. Yeah. So at least in this case, it seems like maybe some positive change. Um, after your investigations, though, has CMS stated publicly any big policy changes as a result of you know the things you've reported on? So the most recent answer we've gotten on that came from interim superintendent, the new new interim superintendent, mm -hmm. Dr. Christopher right. Hill, who uh, just a few weeks ago, remember when I first tried to ask about this at her introductory press conference right before Christmas, mm -hmm. I was muted because uh, board chairwoman Elise Dash, she didn't want to answer the question. Uh, but Dr. Hill at a press conference a couple weeks ago 
did tick through a couple things that the school district have signed, and it was the fullest answer we'd gotten from anyone at CMS in two years on what they were doing. So they've hired some additional staff. They're taking some efforts to fully train people properly, and that may very well have been yeah. what, what resulted in this one. Uh, any more transparency on the district's Title IX committee and task force that they put together? A absolutely not. Absolutely not. Mostly because Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools and transparency are words that just don't <laughs> go together. Often. Uh, our lawsuit against them for those secret uh, meetings uh, is pending. Uh, the data that we talked about there at the beginning where there's, they seemingly don't really have any that they Correct. can give to us publicly. So any change on, on that front? Not that they have announced. It does seem that in their efforts to expand their Title IX uh, staff mm -hmm. and to uh, and double down on their training, uh, it, it implied there is we're going to do a better job of tracking, reporting Dr. Mm -hmm. Hill did mention, making sure everything's properly documented, um, which, I mean, we just know objectively they weren't doing before. So uh, it seems to me like that might improve, but again, the district um, I get, tried to mute me six weeks ago asking yeah. about any of this, so we're just now getting the first details. And again, this latest example, this mom feels like the district was responsive, so by that's encouraging. Accounts, by all accounts, I mean, in two days to have charges, yeah. it, 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 the system worked how mm. it is supposed to. Yeah, uh, a lot more to learn about that case, yes. by the way, as we go down the road. Nick, appreciate you stopping by and sorting it out for us. Let's talk about the weather now. Rain, more rain, then a chance of snow in the forecast. Let's check out that future cast radio.